well uh, we are talking about saas which is uh, you know uh, when we say saas system it is all about data it is right from accessing data to storing data manipulating data and uh, doing analysis and then presenting data okay uh, here in this particular class we are talking about programming language okay saas as a programming language yeah and so we would be doing stuff with uh, that uh, so base Basic uh, programming stuff we have covered so far. Today we are actually going to talk about how do we create data structures in SAS. In fact, last time we spoke a little bit about this. Okay, uh, so here in this class we are targeting programmatic way of doing things using SAS as a programming language, which is a fourth generation language. And uh, this particular class is more focused on the reporting side. Okay, so. Uh, we will we'll, uh, see we will uh, talk about if you want to do more on the analytic stuff how to do that you know what exactly we would add and all we will discuss that little later after the class maybe probably or over the email any questions you have okay what other programming language are you exposed to any other programming language language or any statistical software like spss are you exposed to you can type yeah i can see something no okay what about you mr sinha are you exposed to any programming language or statistical software Hello. like i could see for money she said he's good at excel and little bit of vba and little bit of sql right hello yeah who's this hello. good evening ma'am seema on this side okay hi seema hi how are you A bit of SAS, mainly COBOL, Minitab, SQL, etc. Oh, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, which version of SAS, Mr. Sina? Or when you say SAS, is it? Are you talking about programmatic approach or tool-based approach? that's great so since you already have some background probably you can catch up from here of course we'll conduct uh, sessions for you okay okay great well uh, we would be using sas university edition only okay i guess uh, uh, let me check how many are there and maybe we can start i just saw seema has joined uh, richa and priya i hope priya uh, it's you and richa both i see richa name appearing for the like twice over there hello yeah. ma'am i am at my home okay okay i am at my flat okay <laughs> all right to by joining shortly she had some problem joining uh, from whatsapp so i guess uh, manish do you have any question i see we talked about uh, type of errors right
data in SAS. One way was through a data step, reading the set statement, and another quick way was proc import. All right, that's a quick and fast way. Although you won't have much control uh, when uh, you want to rearrange or re only few ways. Today we are going to talk about a little bit more on creating data structure. So last time we saw how to get data from SAS to SAS, right? So you try to these are the objectives of this particular session. Create uh, temporary and permanent SAS data sets. Okay, I got one message. Is my voice clear enough? Yes, ma'am. Or is it breaking? No, okay. it is clear. Okay, okay, okay fine. Maybe I'll just increase a little bit. All right. Okay, how do we create? How do we create a temporary and permanent SAS data sets? I hope you remember what is a permanent data set and a temporary data set, right? Okay. Adding a new variable. How do we add a new variable? and subsetting variables with different ways and subsetting observations okay now okay i think i should put on all of you on mute yeah please put yourself on mute so that there is no noise all right now what is a permanent and a temporary data set or a permanent and temporary library we discussed last time? Maybe on the first session? You can type or somebody wants to speak, you can speak up. No? Anyone? Can you, can you repeat your question please? Okay. I'm talking about the permanent data set or a temporary data set or in short permanent library and temporary library. Mm -hmm. Mom, we uh, studied it last time, no? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, we know it. What is it? It was, uh, uh, you're asking what is it? Yes, the difference between the two. Temporary, I mean, we can temporary. use the data the moment we can close it and in permanent we can store the data by creating a work file in our main drive. Okay. Um, Priya or Richard, do you want to say and do you want to add anything? You understanding? Hello. Oh yeah. Tell me about your understanding. Ma'am, uh, in temporary library, the content of uh, uh, this library is lost permanently. When we end the session, and uh, and uh, in permanent library, the content of library is, is uh, uh, saved permanently when we end our session. Right, right, correct, correct. Okay, now put yourself back on mute. Uh, so uh, in the permanent library, we see uh, we get the contents right when you come back, uh, come back, right. Not only that, even if you uh, even if you lost the library reference, right when you to close your SAS session, you may uh, lose the library uh, reference, but the data will still be there. Okay, with the temporary library, 
you would actually will lose everything right so the data is lost as soon as you close your SAS session all right uh, our default location of temporary library is work whereas all other libraries that we would create or which are with SAS and last time we have seen those those are permanent data sets all right now uh, we'll come back we we are talking once again about reading SAS data set to SAS data set, but this time we are going to add something more with that. Okay. So these are the various data sources that we can use to create your SAS data set. So from uh, it could be a CSV file, it could be a tab delimited file, Excel file, or R, R file, or, or maybe a R data, right? A data frame, uh, SPSS. MySQL, Oracle, any type of a database file that you can read into SAS. And of course, you can read a SAS data set and create another SAS data set from that particular data set. Okay. The typical uh, program would look something like this data, new, semicolon, set, old, semicolon. And if you are uh, creating some more uh, variables out there, you might write it over here. Otherwise, end, uh, run, set. So that is the way you will end your data step. Okay, so you create a, in this session particularly we are going to talk about creating SAS data set from a SAS data set. Okay. So we have already seen last time, but uh, here is the thing. Here is the difference. We in this case I'm creating a temporary data set M's from a permanent data set, datalib.ms. Do you agree with me? Now, why this is temporary? Because uh, data M's, right? Why this data set is temporary? By the way, I, I hope you remember that whatever we write in a data statement is your output data set, and whatever we write in your set statement is your input data set. Yeah? And I guess you also must be remembering that we can write a library uh, or we write a, or we call a data set like this. So when I say data lib.ms, it means data lib is the library and ms is the data set which is coming from this library. Yeah. Now, in this case, you are creating data ms. So you are creating work dot ms in short right because you are creating a temporary data set from a permanent data set the name of the data set is same here only the difference over here is they are coming from different libraries all right and if you remember last time we did uh, something similar uh, we created air from sas help dot air yeah you can actually read from permanent or temporary data set into permanent or temporary data set so there is no restriction or uh, there is something not like this that you have to always create from permanent to permanent only right so you can have any any which way there is no restriction also on the number of data sets uh, that you can read and output okay so you can create from as many as data sets you you can uh, create you can create from as many as data set or you can create as many as data sets okay so there could be any number of data sets in the data statement as well as, as any number of data sets in the set statement in this case it is uh, it will copy and you just need you just wrote data ms set data lib dot ms and run okay so there is nothing extra there is nothing extra written out there yeah so in this case it will create exact copy of input data set in the work library yeah so this was about creating a temporary data set from a permanent data set similar way so you can see when i run this i would get some, something like this this is, this is a partial output um, 
since we have done similar activity last time i am just going over the slides rather than showing it to you but in short time i'll be you know showing the other things also so um partial output we can see over here employee id and there could be some more variables and so on look at the log log it says that there were 44 observations read from the data sets data lib.ms and data set work.ms has been created has 44 observations and 12 variables similarly you can also create a new data set in your permanent library okay so data data lib.ms2 set ms run so in this case you are going to create a permanent data set from the temporary data set sounds good all right and in this case let's see the, what the log says of course the data set is going to look exactly the same because we are creating the same you know the just the copy of the previous data set there are 44 observations read from the data set ms and the data set data lib.ms2 has 44 observations and 12 variables and that's the data set that we have created all right so so far uh, we we just saw how do we create a data set from a data set okay? no matter whether it is temporary or permanent yeah we are uh, i'm going to quickly state the two phases how uh, you know uh, the processing happens now in this particular program we are not going to focus on how what happens behind the scene because we are more going to focus on the reporting side of uh, sas so uh, i'm not going to focus on uh, you know how the uh, data step process behind the scene and all so i'll just quickly go over it just to give you an idea about it okay so there are two phases or two steps in which the uh, processing happens for sas there is a compilation phase and there is a execution phase okay now what happens in compilation phase let's talk about it so the first step is compilation okay uh, there are three important things that happens in compilation phase one is the syntax check and last time we have seen couple of uh, syntax errors right so syntax check is done then there is something called the pdv or program data vector that is created and and the third part is uh, you get the descriptor portion or descriptive portion of the data set as, as output okay um, once again for a data for a data set or a sas data set we have seen that there is a descriptor portion and there is a data portion okay in short in the compilation the descriptor portion would be the output okay that is going to build and in the execution phase the data portion is going to be built okay so it's it's like that step by step process now uh, what happens with the syntax check syntax check is, is the syntax or the grammar of the language is checked so one statement at a time is checked from um, left to right and top to bottom okay so that is how the syntax is checked uh then the second uh, uh step is pdv is created pdv is program data vector now what is a pdv pdv is temporary memory area okay um it is just a temporary memory so it has existence only during data step processing okay once again only data step processing we are talking about data step right uh, as usual sas has data step and proc step we are talking about data step okay uh, so this pdb is created as a uh, step number 2 during the compilation process okay now what is the job of pdb pdb is something like a memory area which can hold one observation at a time okay it can hold just one observation at a time so in a data set you might have Hundred observations. One observation is one row. So only one observation or one row at a time in the PDB. That is what that that small uh, memory area it is. Okay. At the end of the compilation stage, you get the descriptor portion built. So how the descriptor portion is built? 
data set. Now, so far, we have been talking about creating a data set from a data set. Last time we saw that, uh, you know, we had sashelp.air and the air data set had two variables, uh, date and air, remember? So, and, and so when we created another data set from data, that air data set, we also saw that, uh, you know, exact copy was created. So first, it creates the two variables, date and air, okay? In this case, date and air, these are the two variables are created. In our case, we had 12 variables. Let's not talk about huge things. Let's talk about small, small, you know, variables. So there are only two variables in air. So the descriptor portion is uh, given as the output in, at the end of the compilation phase. And then the PD, uh, then the execution phase starts. In the execution phase, again, three things happen. One is PDV initialization or reinitialization. If it is the next stage or next step, it reads and process the observation one at a time. And as the output of execution phase, you also get the data portion or data part. Okay. Uh, so PDV is initialized, which means, um, you know, in the compilation phase, you got the PDV, but the PDV was blank. It was just a temporary area just to hold one observation at a time. It's a, the, uh, you know, empty house. You can think about it. Okay. Now the empty house is going to be filled up with something. Now that something is missing because you do not know exactly what the values would be. So for the first iteration, uh, all the variables would have missing values. Okay, in the PDV. There are two variables uh, which are extra. Those are created in PDV. One is underscore n underscore and another is underscore error underscore. Underscore n underscore tells you the iteration number. Okay, so suppose there are five observations. So SAS will process five times. So one, two, three, four, five, because there are five observations, okay? One observation at a time. So underscore and underscore will change the value as you start with, you know, the next observation, yeah? So to start with, it will have value one. And there is another flag, which is known as underscore error underscore, yeah? Which is zero, if there is no error and is equal to one if there is error okay then you read the observation one observation at a time you process one observation at a time and once you are done with processing or maybe creating another you know observe uh, another variable then you just copy the data portion into the data set from the PDV, right? So PDV was, uh, PDV is a house to, you know, uh, have one observation at a time just for the calculation purpose and all, and then it is copied to the uh, data portion. Now think about it. Uh, think about uh, building structure. You are starting a building structure right now. There is no cement, only structure of the building is there, right? That is the compilation. And when you put cement and build the, you know, uh, walls, proper walls, that is your execution phase, okay? So during the compilation phase, the structure is built and during the, after the execution, your data or the cement is, uh, you know, built. So your data is, data comes during the execution, all right? Now, I thought that I will still mention this, uh, part even though we are not going to focus much on this part in this particular class since our focus is more on the reporting side but i thought uh, you might uh, you know want to know this because um, sometimes for troubleshooting we might need to look at the execution part okay so when i feel that it is important for you to know i will talk about it right now takeaway is syntax check some memory location to house one observation at a time at the end of compilation you get the structure of the data set built first uh, you know before the execution start the pdv is initialized the missing values 
and n underscore n is one and underscore error underscore is zero because there is no error then you read one observation at a time you process that observation one at a time and then you copy that to the data set okay then the next iteration will start and the same process will continue now we'll talk about creating new variable so far we we have created just exact copy of a data set. Okay. Now, I guess, uh, Tuba, you should also have your computer up and running now. Right. So, all of you can, uh, you know, actually try out uh, creating a data set from a data set. Okay. So, I am, uh, before I start with creating a new variable, I'm going to sh show you once again the, you know, whatever we have done last time and as a continuation of that. This, okay. Okay, so I'm taking you to I have also shared the data with you last time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I'll tell you where to put that data, okay? Because this is university edition. Ma'am, could you also uh, let me know? I mean, I'm not using university edition. Let oh, yes. Like right 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 uh, um so uh, okay at the end of this session i'll tell you okay uh, we won't uh, take it right now papa lara how pa Okay, my session is just coming up. I guess you can see here. I guess you can see, right? Can you see this last session over here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to write a simple step right now. Yeah. And you can follow me, please follow. So what I just did, I created a data set called as uh, air in the work library right i'm just showing you the path right so there were 144 observations read from the data set sassel.air the data set work.air has 144 observations and two variables right yeah. so let's go to the library section so from this SAS help, there is a air data set. I'm just made a copy of this particular data set in work. Okay. How does it look like? It looks like this. So I have a date variable and I have air variable, right? Now I'm going to create a Last time, if you remember, I would like you to keep to have. A, I created a folder called as a late SAS batch. Okay, so I have to put that data in this particular library. The name of the library is test library. I hope all of you except Sima have done this successfully. Have you? Priya, Richa, could you just confirm, please? 
Last time, have you not done? I guess Richa. Richa. Okay. Uh, hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Actually, yesterday I uh, downloaded this as, uh, in my laptop. That's why I didn't do it yet. But I'll do it today. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. So, actually, I have given data set. Uh, okay. You can download the data right from the drive. Can you download the data from the drive? I don't know how to do this. I have given you the course data. I have given you the course data. Can you see the course data here? I am showing you the course data. Mom, I can you can't see the? See. You can see. Okay. Can you see the course data now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. This is the data I have shared with you already. And I have shared. Um, I didn't got it. Um, I will do it today. Hello? And keep that data in your my folders wherever you have SAS installed. Okay, so I'm going to share where I have it so you can find out, figure out the uh, correct path for you yourself. For uh, Mr. Singha and Manish, Mr. Manish, you might not have the data because I have not still shared it with you. Okay. And this is your first class, so can you see SAS new edition my folders? And then I asked you to create one more folder in my folders. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And then I said that we are going to make one library from here. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the course data that I already shared with you in this. I specifically gave you that data so that you, know, you can do your exercises from the last session. And now if I refresh, I will see the test library has all these data sets, the extra data sets. How do we create a library? Anyone remember? Libname, name of the library is test. Now in this case, I've already created, so I'm not going to run the command, but I'll just uh, show you how to, you know, uh, write the command. Okay, my application is not shared, no problem. Can you see now? So I went to server files and folders, and then I found that there is a late SAS batch, right? That is That was the batch, uh, that, that's where I have put the data. I right click on that, and I went to properties, right? And then from the properties, I copied the path. If you see the path looks different because our SAS is on server. The server is Linux server. Okay. Even though you are working with your Windows machine. Yeah. Because this is different ideal version, right? Of SAS. And so you go here. Copy paste and just run this particular command. 
How do we run the command? Lib name test and the name the folder structure and say run. Sounds good. How many of you could do this? Please tell me. I can't because of the path. Because of the old yeah, yeah, yeah. Seema, you won't be able to do that. Yes. And I'll tell you today once Sorry. we are done with our session. What about others? Yes, Manish, maybe you won't be able to. Uh, do, do you have SAS on your machine? Uh, maybe University Edition or any edition? Uh, yes, Priti, I have it. I have the SAS CBOS to level. Okay, then now could you go to the path at list um, of my folders and create some uh, you know uh, folder out there? Even if you may not have anything in that data set, that's okay. But with this particular uh, you know Lignan statement will work. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. So I just want to see that, you know, uh, it, it works fine. Okay, so for to show, I'm going to create another GL SAS. So I, I'm creating another library. Okay. Um, Please don't call how to create a library actually i don't remember it exactly that's why i showed you the uh, can, you can see the screen right that's why i showed yes. you how to write the command okay and i okay. asked you also to copy paste your path don't go for path that i am following okay okay, okay ma'am yeah just write your library name here you should take the path by just go, going to the my folders select the you know particular structure or folder right click properties see the path and copy paste that path enclosed in the bracket uh, uh, sorry quotation mark single or double whatever and write the library reference so in this case since i have already created the test library for our class now i'm showing another library right so that I can also show you the log. So you can see, you should get something similar. So in this case, it says libref GL SAS was successfully assigned for this particular folder. So similarly, you should also get, uh, you know, uh, same uh, note. So if I go to libraries, in, now I see one more library created. Right? Okay. Ma okay. Ma so we would have this library, particular library out there. And now I want you to create test.air from sashelp.air. How would we do that? So I'm just going to write test.air in the data statement, set sashelp.air, right? And you can see I have one more data set in my test yes, library. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I have also shared M's data set. Okay, now M's is already created there. So just double click on that. Let's see what all it has. So this is the data set I had on my slides. Okay. So it is a data set with about uh, 12 variables. It is uh, it has employee ID, first name, last name. Now I have created this data. So if you see, there are not no real names. These are just uh, you know I have created using the do loops and all. So you can see first 101, last 101 is the name of the first person. Okay. The gender, address, some department, job title, birth birth date, age of the person. Now, since I have the birth date, I calculated age. Higher date, whenever I created this data, of course. Higher date, number of service years, 
and the salary of the person. Now, so now we are going to deal with this particular data set. Um, Seema, you can use, uh, you can still use uh, SAS help.air for some time. Okay. Sure, sure. All right, now go, let's go back to the slides. I hope you can see the slides now. I'm going to talk about creating new variable. Now there is a task, you just saw the M's data set, okay? The M's data set has salary, the M data set has age, service years, and so on. Now we have a task to do that. The HR department needs to declare bonus for all the employees and bonus would be given on their work anniversary. So you already ha have their hire date on the day they joined, uh, you know, the company or they were hired. Okay. Now we are going to create new variable uh, as per the task. Right. So we want create bonus because we want to give bonus right so we are going to create calculate the bonus then we also want to create a full name so right now the name is first name and last name are two columns and i want to create a single column called as first uh, first 101 underscore last 101 okay these are the so i just want to join it so say for an example my name is Preeti Pan. so Preeti is one in one Pandu is another column, so we are just going to, uh, you know, make it uh, as one full name. Preeti space Pandu. All right. Then we have an anniversary month of an employee. Now, in this case, we have the we have the higher date of a person. So, um, you know, on at, at at which month the person was hired, right? So we can just calculate the month of the anniversary. Then. Um, one more point we want that since the bonus has to will be given, you know, through managers, maybe the managers would declare the bonus to the employees. So there is a flag for employees with the job title manager. Okay. So we would like to also create a flag. Apart from that, we want to update variables by rounding off their values. Okay. So we have age and service here. So I'll just show once again these uh, things to you. On this one, I'll just show you the when I created, I just created, you know, uh, the age of the person from the current date. Okay. So I did not bother about how many decimals it has and, you know, till what fraction and all. So right now, the age value is something like 61.9986 so and so. Okay. Or 52.290212, whatever. I don't want to see that. I want to round it off. Okay. Uh, typically, we will round it like if it is 61.99, maybe we'll just take 62. Okay. Similarly, service years are also in lot many digits because just I calculated, you know, it uh, uh, from the current date uh, minus the higher date. Okay. Uh, I hope you remember the dates in SAS are numbers calculated from first January 1960, right? We have discussed that point. So in this year, the service years are number, um, you know, the, the subtraction between the today's date and higher date. So that this is what we have already got. So I just want to round it. Do this. Uh, we have. We are going to use a couple of functions. So let's first talk about bonus. Uh, we would like to do some arithmetic operation, right? So suppose HR says that it is 10% bonus, okay? Then we would like to calculate from salary. We already have the salaries, okay? If HR says it is 25% bonus, then we have to calculate again from the salary, right? So that is an arithmetic operation, percent of salary. Then 
we also have the first name and the last name so we would also like to calculate the full name or uh, not calculate uh, create the full name variable so what we would do we get the first name we get the second name or the last name and join them okay so we have uh, to do the concatenation now since concatenating uh, since it's a character variable we call it as concatenation we are joining next is uh, month anniversary month from the date of hire so we want some function which will give you the month so we would be using a function for that next is we want to find out from the job title of a person whether the person is manager or not so we would uh, you know do that we would once again uh, use a function to find out whether the person is manager or not and then we'll create a flag the flag can be one and zero one if the person is manager zero if the person is not manager all right so once again we'll use a function to round off again we will be using function okay so we are going to see couple of functions while doing this we are going to see a character function we are going to see a um, you know function for date which is a month function we want to grab month and uh, we are also going to look at the numeric function to round off apart from this uh, we will also see some functions in detail later on okay for today since we want to create a new variable we have to create it using you know certain uh, operation yeah so that's why we are learning functions right now so let us start one by one let's create a salary uh, sorry let's create a bonus variable uh, with the salary variable okay so i would like you to type this particular uh, you know thing now i i know that you have not written data lib as the command you have written test uh, not command data lib as the library you have written test as the library so just replace that by test and try to run this i will do that with you and for seema yes sir you, i'll give you some fake uh, you know thing to do Okay. Some other file yes. in the same. Yes, yes. Yeah. It won't have bonus or something, but it will have some other, you know, data. SAS help dot air is fine, but it has only two, uh, you know, just two variables. Yeah, yeah. Rent. Is there? Is there a rent variable? A rent data set. Yes, we have rent. Okay, let me check that. But uh, cars is good. Let me check what the rent uh, you know data set has. No, again the two thing data. No, 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 no. Don't go for rent. Cars is good because cars has too many uh, you know variables. SAS help cars. I'm showing that on the screen. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And just yep. get some fake variable from MPG CT, which is a numeric variable. Just ten percent of MPG CT. Okay. For now. So. Sure. So what I'm going to write now along with you is data. I'm creating another data set called as M's, which is uh, going to be in work. And set test dot ems right. Then I would be creating a new variable bonus is equal to a zero of salary into zero point one. Yeah, I want you to run this and look at bonus and tell me what. type of variable is bonus okay i want you to look at it so i'm not going to really tell you what it is exactly i want you to look at the log and output and tell me what type of the variable is created and why so okay
okay so is it character or numeric if it is numeric why is it numeric if it is character why is it character i want you to think and then come back with the answer Well, in SAS, there are only two type of data. We have character data and numeric data. Date is also numeric. Right, ma'am. So, for you, Sima, you should be creating a new variable. You can give the name as anything. Maybe just write bonus. That's okay. Uh, for you, it is MPG CT into point one, right? Yes, I'm doing that. I'm not using yeah. MPG I'm doing invoice. Yeah, yeah, but take a numeric variable, okay? Yeah, numeric MP uh, invoice is numeric number. Yeah, the ten percent of the invoice. Maybe you're giving a discounted value. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to revise my question, okay? I just asked you, what is the type of a bonus variable? Okay, the answer is it is numeric variable, that's fine. I'm going to revise this question. So I'm saying that bonus is numeric variable because it is calculated using the salary variable, which is a numeric variable. Okay. That's my answer, is it correct? Is it 100% correct? Okay. Not, not getting question exactly. Okay, okay, okay. I am going to revise my question and ask this question once again to you. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to actually go back to the data, right? And, and I'm going to do a mistake here. And instead of salary, I take screen. Pardon? Uh, screen. Yeah, okay, okay. My screen is... So what I said that I'm going to do a mistake here, uh, not mistake, I'm going to change this program. I know it's a mistake, but uh, I'm going to do something like this, right? Okay. So I'm multiplying F name, right? Which is a character variable into point one and call, calculate bonus, okay? 100% okay. sure this is not going to work, isn't it? Yeah, because yes. F name, yeah because it's in but i got the yeah and let me scroll down to bonus and i see that bonus is still numeric so did you get my question i asked your question that what is the type of the variable right bonus is and the answer is it is numeric numeric okay? yeah then I asked you a question, why is it numeric? So one of you or some of you said, it is numeric because you are using salary variable to calculate. And I yes, said no. My answer is no, okay? I have an answer. Yeah? Uh, Prithi, I have an answer to this question. Yeah, uh, yeah. When, when there's a new column, or when there's a data uh, created in SAS, it actually by default uh, take it as uh, uh, num numeric. Um, so to kind of uh, uh, convert it to uh, uh, string or, or, or uh, text, we have to kind of let us know that this is not uh, numeric, it has to okay. be text. Okay, okay, okay. Good that you bring this point over here. So I'm once again going back to the code. I guess you can see the screen. 
Yeah. Yes. Sir. Once again, I'm back to the screen, and this time I'm just taking out that point one, and I'm writing bonus is equal to F name. Okay. So Manish, right? He just said that by default it will create a numeric variable. And so what I'm doing here, I'm just taking out that multiplied by 0.1 and uh, writing bonus is equal to F name. And I'm going to run this now. And let's go. Bonus is character now. Uh, can I add uh, one more point here? Yep, just yep, just sure. to correct myself, because uh, uh, by default it takes it as the uh, number uh, mm -hmm. if it's also multiplied by uh, a number if something is multiplied by a number take it by default take it take it take take it okay. as number. okay 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 so i'm doing some strange things over here okay so i'm multiplying f name into l name which is which doesn't make sense and we know that it is not going to give us anything Okay. There are some errors, but I'm just right now, I'm trying you to focus only on certain thing and wow, bonus is number. What happened? Mom, I think in bonus, these things are saved and it doesn't matter what we write in it. What is saved? This, uh, this result. I'm creating a new variable now. Yeah. So. Let's yeah. Say same. So, so Preeti, I think uh, what is happening here because uh, again, uh, I agree with the the statement that, that when this is being multiplied by any other uh, uh, character or the number it's actually it's a, it's in built in such that it takes it as number because multiplication can only happen between numbers yes correct so that is the point that i was trying to bring okay rather than telling you answer in one second i thought i would bring this discussion so what happens right how the variables are created so when you are using a variable to create any new variable, it looks at what is the operation that is made. Okay. It does not look at what all is involved. So whether salary is numeric or salary is character, whether there is multiplied by a character or a numeric, it doesn't matter. Right. It looks at the character. Uh, it looks at the operator. Okay. So right now I just showed you multiplication because that's a commonly known arithmetic operator, but there are character operators also. So if I use character operator here, no matter if I'm using salary and point one or whatever number, uh, if I use a character operator, bonus would be character. Okay. So to answer this question, we get this, uh, you know, something like this, uh, because bonus will be created here as a number since it is in, it is a result of arithmetic operation. Okay. So a new variable is defined as numeric. If it is either you directly assign, that means you write bonus is equal to salary. Then you have a new numeric variable as a number. Uh, sorry, you have a new variable as a number or it has to be arithmetic calculation or a function, something like sum function, average like mean function, etc. Okay. On the same way, it would have been characterized if it directly assigned to character variable that's what we did when I said I just showed new is equal to bonus. I mean new is equal to F name right so it is a function uh, like a scan function or a substring function then the result variable is that all right I hope you understand what this point. I'm sorry there is some noise going on behind because I don't know some you know maybe people are still in the mood of holy so uh, certain something is going on in the background. I hope you can ho uh, hear me clearly. Yes, ma'am. 
You got this point? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now, you must have noticed I have written alien variable. Yes, ma'am. Right? Uh, yeah. Because uh, a new variable is an alien variable to the data set. Now, what is alien? Alien is, you don't know anything about it, right? So, let's go back to SAS. There are a lot of, lot of things in your uh, log, actually, if you see. I'm just scrolling up. Just a little bit scroll down. Oh, it's off. Yeah. So, last we calculated bonus from something into something right so if you see here new is equal to missing right 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 so i'll just write back a correct thing so that you should not have an impression that you know. sorry So I said alien variable because you know we do not have any idea about uh, this variable, right? I'll just check if the I can uh, you know try to reduce the noise that we are getting here. Okay, please give me a second. Come the sound of a doll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay, uh, for now, uh, you have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, as I said, I call a new variable as an alien variable. There is a reason for that. And as we go further, you will understand what I'm saying, why I'm saying so. Uh, uh, you know, as, as we do not know anything about alien, similarly, a new variable, we do not know anything about it. Don't count the okay, so for now, let's uh, go with that. I see a question. Excellent. Yeah. You can use the CAST data set from SAS cell in case you do not have any other data. All right. So we did discuss this. So you got something like this, the partial data portion and the partial descriptive portion. Uh, uh, this is what, what we want. And so we are going to add something more to that, okay? This, is, this was our expected result. So we add, we will add bonus is equal to salary into point one. Then we'll add full name, full underscore name is equal to F name. This is what, I guess you can see the screen, right? This is what is your character operator or, or concatenation operator. Then you are giving a space in between because it should sound, look like Preeti space. Okay. And then concatenation operator L name. Anniversary month to be calculated from the higher date and it should be a, it should be a month of the higher date. So I would say month function on higher date. Then we are writing if find upcase of the job title as manager greater than zero. Now uh, there are two functions that I'm using. First is upcase. 
the job title if you look at the job title values they are you know the manager can be uh, you know at the end that could be the first one you know somebody has a job title like administrative manager or purchasing manager and m can be capital m can be small so what we are doing before we do comparing or before we find out anything we make them all on the same uh, you know uh, of the same case so that's why we are up casing the job title and then we are using another function called as find function here which says that if you find manager and if you find uh, your uh, find function actually finds the you know uh, where the, the the place at which it finds so if it is greater than 0 that means you find manager otherwise you don't okay so you have to find manager string from the job title and if it is greater than 0 then the flag should be 1 so you are saying uh, flag m is equal to 1 else flag n is equal to 0 so you are looking actually you are learning a lot of things over here you are learning operators you are learning a function as well as you are learning if then else okay so that is how uh, we define the flags the next is uh, the next is age okay so uh, you are rounding off the you are rounding off the age with the round function so that you just get the rounded unit and also the service years you want to round okay so i want you to type this particular program for the cars data set you can take the type and make of the model right uh, just to make some uh, you know new uh, i mean the complete name or just say name as a variable instead of full name is equal to type concatenate with the model okay i don't think you have any date function over there i mean date over there in cars let me check i don't think there is any date variable you just yeah, have that. yeah, yeah you, you do not have that over there okay maybe for the date function you can refer some other data set uh class yes ma'am we have uh, the date airline oh yeah airline uh, air uh, air sassel dot air yeah 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 i forgot okay but it has only two variables so i did not recommend okay for now you can use this uh, you can use all the other variables and to uh, for cars instead of finding manager you can find something else let me see what you can do. SUV. SUV would be a one one particular value actually. Go to model variable, and in the model variable, you can see dr. Okay. For. 4DR, 2DR, something like that. So you can find out 4DR. Can you see the screen? I'm showing you. So you can find out this particular string 4DR. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you can just repeat. Only month function you won't be able to do that here. For, for that you can use uh, another uh, you know data set. So right now I want you to those who have M's data set please go ahead with this. Those who do not have this data set go for uh, you know cars data. Set. And type quickly. I'm going to copy paste this program and run it for you, but, but I want you to type quickly and try it out. What, uh, what is the uh, variable for which we are using for full name and last name in car? Uh, uh, you can use the make of the car, I guess, just a moment. Make and type. Yeah, no, yeah, don't take model. Model is pretty big. So use a type and make. So Acura, SUV, Audi, Sedan, you know, it should look like that. Sounds good? Yeah. Yeah. And instead of finding manager, you can find out 4DR. Okay. I'll, I'll show you the program. Right.
Any luck? How can we use this uh, line which is right after F name? Oh, the, that is the vertical bar uh, on your keyboard on the top of, uh, you know, after backspace or before or enter, on the top of enter. Shift the back side. Uh, do you see the vertical line? On your yeah, please use that. And for anniversary month, pardon for anniversary month. Yeah, so uh, for cars, you won't be able to do that because we do not have any date variable. Um, you know, that thing you can do in uh, sasm.air. So, right now, just to do other things and I'm going to run this. Uh I've just used bonus full name, but I'm getting error. Full name. What is the error? Are you giving this or? It should not be with vertical bars, or you may use this exclamation mark. Okay, now let's look at the log. The log will tell us. That there were 44 observations that were read from test.ee. -E. And work.emps has 44 observations and 16 variables. 
right? Because we add few variables, isn't it? So we added service year, we added age, we added flag M, we added anniversary month, bonus, and full yes, Yeah. Age and flag year were already there. We just uh, rounded them off. It's run now. Done. Now somebody got married here uh, from Punjabi family, you know, so that's why this all pool and all is going on. <laughs> Ma'am, with the exclamation mark, it has run. Yeah. It should actually run with this uh, vertical bars also. I have tried. Which are just below, bars, but it's not just, Okay, okay. Just below the backspace. And uh, it has to be, you know, uh, nearby. I mean, you cannot have a lot of space in between. If you give a space, say something like this space, this, or maybe one space between, it won't work. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, what is the thing we can use for manager? Yeah, for manager, you can say 4DR. See here, 4DR. This string comes, you know, a couple of times in between somewhere as the last or somewhere. Under so you can just run. Yeah, on model. Correct, correct. Okay. If you are upcasing, you have to write the upcase thing, okay? So, for our friends who do not have this, I am running this also. Some errors, okay, all right, good. In fact, I would say, uh, I, I should congratulate, uh, you know, if you are getting error because that's the best way to learn SAS. If you get an error, then you can troubleshoot and you will get to know what, what's happening wrong, you know. That's why I showed you a couple of errors for the bonus variable rather than just telling that it is numeric. So, okay, over here there is nothing, so. For the cars, I guess rounding can be done only for, for the engine size, I guess. All other is okay. Yeah, only for the engine size. Okay. If you write another name of a new variable, you will create a new variable. But if you are just writing the same name, so you are actually create, uh, you know, you are just uh, updating that variable value. Okay. All right. Now let me run this. Oh, service here is not there. It's okay. So I also did that for uh, you know uh, the cars data set. You can see the engine size is now four to something like that. It is rounded off. The bonus is actually in this case it is uh, uh, invoice into point one. The full name is your model and the make of the car and. The flag M is yes, uh, on yes, So over here for the done. third observation, there is four DR for the fifth, fourth one, fifth one. So you should get flag M as one here. 
You can see, confirm. Right? See me? Yeah, okay. So I'm putting there. Okay, now for the manager thing or for the upcase model, right? So what happened is whenever it is 4DR, right? Okay, now if you have not understood this, I'm going to do one more thing over here, okay? So I'm creating a new variable, okay? Find is equal to and writing the complete find thing up to greater than zero thing over here. Okay. I'm showing for the cars also. So what I did, I I'm creating a new variable find because we want to see at what place you got the manager, you know, value. Because if you see here, sure. right? So administration manager, the manager appears here. For any other manager, marketing manager, my manager is here. Senior marketing manager, it's it's pretty you know far, yeah. So I want to see in the string where do I get this value uh, manager, okay? So then I will explain in the if else part. Okay, so that means I did some mistake. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I should have written this fine thing not in between of the else if okay i should write it before my mistake my bad So administration manager and senior marketing manager will see these values, okay? You can see administration manager 16th at the 16th place, then 000, 000 here because there is no manager, then senior manager 11th uh, is 18th place, then they, in between there are purchase manager or something like that, marketing manager is there, right? Now let's do the same thing for our cars data set. I'm just writing a function here. Find is equal to this. Okay, so it will uh, help you to understand, uh, you know, how it happens. So what we are saying, it should be of uh, uh, if so it is going to be zero zero, but here it should be one two three four five place. Here it should be third, fourth place because there is a blank in between, right? right. See that? Yeah. So zero, zero, six. Maybe there was a space in between. Then five, right? Nine, twenty-two. Now let's see what is twenty-two. So I'm looking at this particular observation. Ma'am, which code yeah. is used for? Right after find. Pardon? What is the uh, statement for this? Find is equal to. Oh yeah, you have to write uh, just uh, same. Um, you know whatever we have write here, uh, we whatever we have uh, wrote here in the if statement up to greater than zero. You know before greater sign. Okay, so sure. there should not be a bracket. Yeah. So I'm just creating a new variable to show you how this worked okay so what has happened since there is some you know value because it is greater than zero if 4dr has found out okay so if you find it find a value over there now let's go back and see if you do not find 4dr the value is zero here so flag M is zero, 
if you find a value of 4 dr it is 6 here 5 here 9 22 then the flag m is 1 yeah got it similar way when you have a manager right so let's go to that let me go to manager field job title okay so over here there is a manager no manager no manager no manager no manager you know because i'm specifically looking at you know manager as a term i'm not looking for whether the person is ceo or something right i'm looking at the term manager so till now no manager over here i have manager 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 right so here i will get, get flag m at one zero 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 till here over here once again one 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 okay right let's verify that sorry it is output here yeah you can see that oh. sorry that was a car's data can you see here whenever in the mind there is something flag m is one whenever it is zero flag m is zero once again you got something here you got flag m as one interesting yes yes uh, there's one more question Preeti, uh, so find is actually finding the character, yeah. but uh, what is uh, up is doing there? Yeah, okay. Uh, now, uh, in this case, probably you may not require up case or low case or anything, right? But it's a good practice to first uppercase all of the thing. The reason is that maybe when I created, since I have created the data, I made sure that the data looks nice, okay? But uh, Say suppose a data entry operator wrote small m right here and uh, if you are trying to find now I, I will just uh, to answer your question i'll just do one thing simply i'll just take out up case okay? and while comparing the term suppose i don't write manager as it is there in the data set i write uh, let me write all as small okay so of course it will not find that term, right? So this is just to make the safer side. Right now the data is nice because uh, I'm I'm having a nice data. But uh, what if you know the data has different cases? It could be capital M and all small. It could be all small. It could be something capital. You know may may not be really at the nice uh, way written. So in this case, if I try to look for the term manager, but I'm giving a different case, I will have all as zero. So flag M is zero everywhere, right? So just to take care of possible issue, okay? Possible issue where a case might be different. Since right now there was no problem, it's okay, even if I just take out upcase and write, uh, you know, a, a manager as capital M and all small, because I know that in my data set, th that, that is the case that I have used. But what if I do not know that? It's better to... Then in a simple thing, having it in that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So this is one way. I'm going to change and I'm going to introduce one more function. So instead of find, I'm using a scan function. So just focus on the blue color uh, blue statement because that's the only thing that I have changed here instead of find statement I'm using a scan statement which is trying to find out manager okay 
once again i am using upcase because i am making all of them in the uppercase <coughs> sorry and i know for sure that the manager term is always at the end okay now if i am so sure that the manager term is going going to be always at the end it is always going to be marketing manager purchasing manager or something manager or just manager and there is nothing after that then i can use something like this so here i am using a scan function to scan through the job title and my minus 1 because i am starting from the back i am starting from the last letter the last two word okay well we are going to discuss functions in detail later on right now i am i have introduced you because i wanted to show you ways of creating variables okay so we will uh, uh, we will discuss functions little more in detail but for now scan function looks at the string and it can find out that string from uh, at the beginning or from the you know back for back it is minus 1 because it's a other way out now on the first session we also i also showed you how to look for the help okay so in case till the time we learn it properly and you are interested to know what is the scan function is i would recommend that you find out the help that i showed you last time you go to support.sas.com try to find out the help. another way to find out the help is question mark product documentation and find out okay any questions so far uh yeah i have a, i have a question yeah. here yeah. so there was a mm -hmm. there was a function of uh, rounding the numbers mm -hmm. so uh, what if we have to do it to some decimal places probably one or two yes yes uh, so i have not yet come to there okay uh, so um, let us first talk about this functions and then i'll come to round function okay okay uh, and uh, one more question here uh, let's say so when we were talking about the up case so just one last question here yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were talking about the up case yeah, we yeah. knew that the the first letter was starting for, uh, with m and or the, the first letter was actually the caps one and the, the remaining one the remaining ones were uh, smaller ones now what if i have a data where uh, it's actually uh, unpredicted half of the data is uh, is with um, some small m or uh, some small letters all of small letters Few of them are whole caps. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. 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 That you ask this question. Okay. Now let me bring to your point. Notice that I use the upcase functions just assuming that the data could be in any shape. Okay. In fact, when I have capital M and all letters small, it's not upcase. It is propcase. Okay. It is called as propcase or proper case. Upcase is when you have all capitals. So. for a simplicity i assume that my data might have some small some capital and i don't know maybe some capital and other small and that's the reason i used one standard function upcase to capital all the letters and that's why you see that the string that i'm comparing is all capital letters but the okay i can see your mic is blinking but i can't hear you okay no problem i guess you must have got yeah, this yeah i got it okay great great okay so so far we spoke about uh, the concatenation operator the arithmetic operator and the scan function or the you know the character function right um, another function that another uh, two functions that we will talk about is one is month function uh, you know so let's see what is the value given for anniversary month okay 
So here the anniversary month is 2781, right? So let's see that now. What are the higher dates are? So higher date is Feb. So that's why we got two, month two, right? Then we got seven, eight, so on. So basically the month function will give you a month starting from one to 12, all right? It's simple. Yeah. Next is the round function. The round function acts differently, okay? So round function actually, okay, now let me take this opportunity to tell you. Anyway, we will see once again the round function, but I'm, right now I want to show you something. One way to see the help is this. Okay, when I'm typing, okay, I have switched the, off the thing. Okay, well, round function has, uh, you know, uh, uh, it rounds off to the near, nearest unit, okay? Uh, we have different functions in SAS. In the nearest integer only, integer is the integer part. So sometimes uh, I have something like 2.495 and I want to read 2. So that is the integer part, okay? By Okay, let's go to support.sas.com. Actually, I was going to show you the help. Can you just click on the product documentation? I have switched off the help. Support.sas.com has fantastic documentation. Well, when we do uh, functions, uh, you know, in detail, I'll come back to this point. Uh, but to tell you in short, we have int function to tell you the integer part, exact integer. We have floor function, which gives you the uh, short, uh, you know, smaller integer part and um, seal function for the larger integer part. Similarly, we have a round function, which can up to the round of unit. Okay. Yeah. So when we do this, uh, I guess uh, that it's better that we discuss that time. But for now, the default round function give you the exact integer. Okay, round function can also go up to 0.25 or or nearest hundred. or uh -huh. 